Hello, I'm here Graham McMillan from Open Road talking to Tim Montgomery, the Director of Conservative Home and Conservative Intelligence. Tim, um, the Coalition, what an extraordinary uh, few months, but do you think that it's going to last its full five years? Well, I was a sceptic uh, when it began and I was particularly concerned that the pressures on the Liberal Democrats who have lost about a third of their support since the Coalition was formed would mean that they would not want to stay part of this arrangement because to do so would mean electoral oblivion. But actually, I think they have no choice but to stick with it so long as their opinion poll ratings are as low um, as they are. I think they will get big setbacks in next year's Scottish, Welsh and local elections, although a byproduct may actually be that they'll end up in coalition with Labour in Holyrood, which could be an interesting extra dimension. I also think they've made the strategic decision, as well as the obvious chemistry between Clegg Cameron and other leaders of the coalition, that it's in their long-term interest to prove to the British voter that a hung parliament, an indecisive election result, isn't necessarily a bad thing. And I think if they can show that a coalition government can work in Britain in the worst of times, which is what we're suffering at the moment with the economy, that uh, people should never be afraid again of voting for a third or a minor party. When you look at the um, reforms that they're bringing in, um, some of them are, are, are quite, quite radical. How would you characterise them? Where do you think they are going to be the successful areas of reform and where do you think there may be more problems? Well, I've, when as a Conservative activist, when um, the Conservative Party failed to win the general election outright, which I feel, still feel it should have done, um, I thought that we would potentially have a coalition of the lowest common denominator with the parties diluting policies. But actually, it's been quite the, uh, the reverse. We haven't just had the things that I expected the Conservatives to do, like tackle uh, the, the deficit and reform score. We're seeing an incredibly ambitious health and welfare and um, police reform agenda as well. So in a way, that's quite exciting. It's, uh, as a, a politics watcher, um, it's a very interesting to see a government be so ambitious. But it's also... Uh, quite an inexperienced government. Conservative ministers haven't been in power for 13 years, Liberal Democrat ministers for a good part of a century. And so they are coming into office making very difficult decisions um, with the support of a civil service that they're cutting back with fewer special advisers, I think because of the ill-advised decision that David Cameron took in opposition to cut the number of ministerial aides. So they're doing an extraordinary amount of things that would be difficult for the most experienced and well-resourced of governments at a time when actually they are inexperienced and under-resourced. So I admire the breakneck speed of this coalition. I call it the breakneck coalition rather than as David Davis called it the brokeback um, coalition. But although the speed is um, exhilarating and fascinating, we all know what can happen to uh, cars and projects that travel at breakneck speed. Um, and, uh, and finally, um, the coalition has got a fairly clear program of work for 18 months, so maybe, maybe, maybe two years. Um, what are they going to do to develop plans to see them through to those five years? Are they developing new ideas and new policies at the moment that um, people should be contributing to? Well, uh, there's a couple of projects that are beginning to get underway because although the coalition agreement that uh, the two parties signed after the election sets out an ambitious uh, program that keeps being added to health reform wasn't, for example, in that agreement, is probably not enough to sustain a legislative program in years three, four, or five. So there's a group called Coalition 2.0, which I'm a small uh, part of, uh, meeting under the auspices of the Centre Forum think tank with people like uh, David Laws and Chris Hune from the Liberal Democrat side, Michael Gove, Greg Clark, Owen Patterson from the Conservative side, which is going to look at what the two parties might do together in future, slightly removed from the leadership so that there's an uh, ability to sort of the leadership to say, no, we don't quite like that, but still formal enough for it to matter. And I think Oliver Letwin and Dali Alexander are also beginning to set up uh, sort of supper clubs inside the Palace of Westminster where Tory and Liberal Democrat peers and MPs come together to discuss specific projects. So early embryonic signs of uh, both parties thinking about the future. Fantastic. Tim Montgomery, Director of Conservative Home and Conservative Intelligence, thank you very much.